spoiled kids. We see them all the time, right? You think rich people, yeah, I mean, they're trying to compensate for the fact that they're never there for the kids to so just buy them everything they want. But you see them poor families where the parents work one job, two jobs, three jobs to get the kids these things that are not necessary. Nice luxury items. Why? They're spoiling their kids. I mean, we know it when we see it, spoil kids. I saw it the other day. We were having lunch and we had shrimps on skewers, you know, a toothpick through the shrimp. The dad already peeled the shell for the daughter. And then she was there crying, not like real crying, like fake crying, because she had poked herself with the stick. She had eaten the head of it, the part of it, right, near the edge, and then she didn't know how to eat the rest. I mean, it's simple. You just go like this sideways, you don't stick it in. And then her mom was trying to tell her how to eat it, and she refused, so her mom took it and moved it along for her. I mean, she's spoiled, right? But it's natural. Parents want to help their children, want to give them what they want. I mean, they're an extension of yourself, right? You don't like depriving yourself, do you? But we all know that you can't just always give them what they want all the time. You can't do everything for them. They got to grow up someday. They got to learn someday. You don't want to have spoiled brats running around, which we see so much nowadays. But the question is how? How does it occur? I mean, if you think about it, you're like, well, logically, um, you always get them what they want, they become spoiled. Is that true? If you look at fairy tales, right? A lot of these people get what they want and they're not spoiled, like Sleeping Beauty, right? Snow White, I mean, she cleaned the dwarves houses. But they went through adversity. I think that's the main thing about spoiling kids adversity how do they learn to accept no right what is it about restraint that we have to learn or why do we have to learn it right i think the simple answer is because nobody is gonna always have people saying yes to them their whole life right how will they handle no and i think that's a sign of a spoiled brat when they throw a tantrum because they don't get what they want but before we even get there how do we address the issue of not giving your kids what they want? How do you define the difference between need and want? I feel like it's very easy for people to say, well, you give them what they need, not what they want. But really, what's the difference, right? I mean, my cousin was talking about in Japan how many parents feel obliged to buy their kids these hundred something dollar backpacks because they're in fashion. We're talking about seven year olds. Everybody has it. Would you want your kid to be the only one at school left out? standing alone with a different backpack of course not you want them to be well adjusted to fit in life is hard enough as a seven-year-old you don't need anything else right but where do you draw the line and say this is not something you need and so we're not going to give it to you it's very easy when you talk about a baby right you say they need everything right they're crying because they have a reason but when does it come to be that they're crying because they're throwing a temper tantrum? Two years? I mean, definitely, right? One year old? Nine months? Six months? When? When do you start transitioning and refusing stuff and saying you don't need it, right? I mean, a preemie, you're going to say, okay, they need a drink, milk. They're premature, they're tiny, they need all this stuff, but what if they're three months old and doing very well on their growth curve? Their weight's fine, their head circumference, their length, all that stuff. Do you then say, okay, I know you are crying, probably hungry, but you don't need to be fed literally right this moment. You could learn to wait a few minutes. When do you start to transition? My daughter is nearing 10. It's interesting to see her cousins who are a bit older and how they respond to stuff, right? I made the observation to my wife that they usually don't cry because they're hurt or injured or this or that. Their crying is all emotional. 
as in they're crying because they're emotionally upset, not because they're physically hurting. The one that's almost two, she fell. She hit her head, and I would imagine that hurts. I didn't do anything. I didn't respond. I want to see what she's going to do. And she was going to make a cry, then looked around. Nobody was paying attention. I was pretending not to, and she looked again, and still nobody was attention. And she picked herself up. Did not cry. She cries a lot. She throws a fuss. But that's when she doesn't get what she wants. It's an emotional thing. My daughter's not even a year. She also is crying. And I think it's just a tantrum. She's upset because she's not getting what she wants. But how do you differentiate whether you're missing something or not? They can't talk. How do you know? And I think that's one thing that parents struggle with not just when they're little, but when they grow older. How do you know your refusal to give them this, even though it doesn't seem necessary, is not going to cause trauma to them years down the road? How do you know not letting your kid go on a trip, even though it's expensive and you can't afford it, not going to cause them to feel left out? They're going to grow to become a serial killer because they hate everybody in life? The answer is you don't. You can't know everything, but you still got to take a stand anyways. How do you do that? How do you deal with FOMO? Fear of missing out on something your kid is experiencing. I'll talk about that next.